Hey guys, Gary J here. And today we're going to be looking at a different type of straight razor that was invented by the Durham Safety Razor Company, founded in New York in 1908 by Mr. Thomas C. Durham. And the trademark published was 1908. Now, I've done some videos on some of these other types of razors right here. For example, uh, these Western cutthroat razors right here. And uh, that's uh, I have a video on that. And also uh, this type of cutthroat uh, Western style here, which was different than uh, a regular razor. Because this type of model right here has a disposable blade in the bottom right here. And... Uh, you can see uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch of the disposable blade at the very bottom. That's the only thing that's exposed on this uh, blade right here. It's right at the very bottom, about a sixteenth of an inch. And uh, that blade looks like this right here. And this is just half of a double-edged razor. And it fits inside here, like this right here. So this is called a shavette, a shavette. And also, I did a video on these right here, and this is the uh, Kamasuri Japanese straight razor. And uh, this is a really nice one uh, by Isuko. And that's a vintage one. And this right here is a Kamasuri 2. This is a shavette Kamasuri, which means that uh, it too... Uh, will hold a blade, uh, disposable blade, inside here. Uh, this part comes off and the blade sticks out at the very bottom, about a sixteenth of an inch. And these shavettes with disposable blades shave incredibly well. They're fun to shave with. Okay, so that's one neat thing about them, too. So, uh, I've got a video on those Japanese straight razors and the Western cutthroat razors here. Uh, another thing about this particular razor here that we're going to be looking at, the uh, Durham Duplex, is that uh, it came out about 1910, they say. And this is what it looks like, basically. Um, it comes in this little patch, pouch here, and it came in boxes and it came in other... Uh, uh, types of displays too but uh, this is one you see to me kind of more common and nice wet leather pouch there and the interesting thing is you know it looks just like a straight razor here but when you open it up you notice there is no blade here right so uh, that's kind of interesting there when you see that it has a celluloid scales right here we call it and these celluloid scales look like artificial ivory is what it looks supposed to look like. And it's got lines going through here. And these lines going through here look uh, just like bone marrow. And you would think that this is real ivory. So that's a really pretty contrast to it. And uh, on this part of the um, blade handle right here, it says patent it in... Uh, May 28th, that would be 1907. So it goes way back uh, to 1907. We can get that in focus. So this is kind of a neat thing here. Now, this was put out around 1908, 19, um, 1910. These blades, these type of razors were. And uh, by 1917, uh, Durham Duplex said that there were 5 million happy customers with these, happy customers with these blades. So they became quite prolific in a short period of time, uh, and they have a great advantage. Now, in this pouch right here, you've got this one piece right here, which we'll talk about in a minute. And uh, you have this piece here, uh, attachment that goes on it too. And we'll look at that. And over here, you have a box of razors. And uh, the razors here are pretty pretty simple. Uh, comes in the red box. 
And this is the original razor blade here. Now these can be probably uh, between 80 to 100 years old, these kind of razor blades, these kind of straight razors. But uh, this is what the razor blade looks like. Now, one may say it would be hard to find the, the blades for this right here. Well, it's really not that hard to find the blade, a blade that fits it, uh, because this right here is a brand new blade right here. And so if you have one of these, or if you want one of these, and you say, well, I don't think I'll ever find the razor blades for it, then that can be solved very easily, I think. What you end up doing is going by the uh, hardware store and uh, buy carpet blades. And uh, it's the same blade, basically. Now, it's made to cut carpet, uh, not, not as far as shaving so much, so... Uh, if you're going to shave with these blades, and that would be the reason you'd buy it in this case, uh, you would uh, hone this blade uh, first of all before you would use it. And uh, you'd use a strop to hone this blade. Remember, it's double edge, edge on each side. And uh, uh, you would sterilize it too with a mavicide or something like that for 10 minutes, let it soak after you had. Uh, stropped it at all but uh these are like three dollars and a quarter three dollars and a half for a pack of five of these right here so and that's what a lot of people use for the blades on these right here because you can go on ebay and get the original blades uh in these uh, red boxes right here uh some of them a little bit expensive not too terribly bad but uh the carpet blades are a cheaper way to go but uh, it may be easier to shave with the original, too. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. So, uh, another thing, too, that when you look at these blades right here, uh, and this type of shaving method here, uh, it's pretty interesting how Mr. Durham came up with this idea and why it, uh, I think it took off so well. Now, again, by the 1920s, they had 8 million people that were using these, according to uh, Durham Duplex. Uh, so, in the 1920s, they, they, come, they come out with uh, uh, a different type of razor, too, in the 20s. And, and the razor they came out with looked a little bit like this right here, uh, but it had this kind of top on it. It looked like this on the top. So it basically had this kind of top part on it right here with a blade underneath it. Now I don't have the original like this, but this is kind of what it what it would have looked like if you if you saw it, okay? So that's kind of neat. Uh and it worked real well too. So how does this work basically? Pretty simple. What you're going to end up doing is taking this part right here and this cone part right here with the tines, we'll call these tines right here, and these little tabs right here, two tabs right here, and you got two openings here. You just line those tabs up and slide that on, and so it'll look just like that. Okay. And this says Durham... Um, duplex here it's got a symbol here and it's made in the usa uh, which is a good thing now uh this is is going to be loose when you put this on here until you put the blade on now the blade here is 17 thousandths of an inch thick so it's not that thick but it's 17 thousandths of an inch thick be careful when you put this on remember it is a double edge blade right here and you're going to take your handle part right here and just slide over that and push down in the middle right here. Hold this kind of firmly and hold it up here and just be real careful sliding that thing forward. And so that's all the way on. The good thing about uh, using this carpet blade right here just in the demonstration is that it allows you to see the blade itself instead of the stainless steel blade, which is it's hard to see because this blade is coated with a blue uh, coloring. So you see the blade here comes out. 
this blue part right here, and then this is your edge right here, your bevel. And the blue part comes down here, and this is your bevel. Uh, looking at it on the other side, the blade actually comes about uh, halfway up on these tines right here, about halfway up on these tines. Okay, so that's not really touching the skin so much when you shave with this. And when you get ready to shave with one of these right here, the technique's going to be different than using a commissory or a western uh, cutthroat type blade. On these right here, they're pretty simple and in pretty ingenious because what happens is that, uh, let's say, for example, if this was uh, my face right here, and I was shaving my face, and I had lather on here, uh, shaving cream, and I want to shave, then I hold the blade like this right here and turn it over, and you see the writing on the back. The writing always stays to the back, and you would lay it on the skin flat. Okay, so it'd be on the skin flat and maybe tilt it up 10 degrees. You don't tilt it up like 23 or 30 degrees like you do with a regular straight razor. This is made to be held flat and tilted just maybe 10 degrees, and then you just run it across your face when you shave. Okay, these little ties right here are going to push your skin down out of the way so that the edge of the razor will cut your whiskers. Okay, that's to me, is a lot like what happens with one of these razors. I don't have a decent one to show you except this one, because uh, I don't. I shave with a straight razor uh, every day, so I don't some type of straight razor. But this right here has this plastic piece here to push your skin down, so the razor can shave your whiskers, and it's kind of hard to cut yourself with these things. Okay, so. This is not quite as refined as a modern day type, but uh, this prevented people from cutting and nicking themselves and having to worry about sharpening these blades. Nothing feels worse than trying to shave with a dull razor. It pulls your hair and is very uncomfortable on your face when you got a dull razor. And some people just didn't have the stuff to, sh to sharpen these blades the way they want to. Now, a lot of times a good blade will last you Sometimes three months, if it's sharpened correctly to start with, uh, and you can strop it and uh, keep that edge sometimes for six months with some people. So um, with um, Durham Duplex, uh, they had this really unique idea of this Chevette type razor. Uh, making it easier than using a regular cutthroat uh, type razor or any other type. So, uh, again, it goes way back. But again, in the 1920s, that's when they came out with the other type of razor, like this right here. They call it a hoe razor. And the reason they call it a hoe razor is H O E, H O E, hoe. Like if you're hoeing the ground, because this right here is kind of like a hoe if you were hoeing the ground right here, and they call this a hoe razor too. A little FYI there. And the double edge worked real well. Okay, so you could also, besides shaving your face with this right here, you could use this right here also to trim your mustache, your beard, your hair to a certain degree as well because of these tines right here. Uh, you have to be real careful doing that, but um, people did do that too. So this was just kind of a, a neat idea. And also help stop spreading germs like in the barbershops and stuff like that too. But uh, again, uh, we'll see that you can also uh, sharpen these blades as well. So now, We'll take this off right here. Now, right here is a little tab right here. If you can see that right there. I think right here you can see that right there. A little tab right here that's down. And what you do is take your thumb and put it right there, okay, to you know, catch it. And hold this right here uh, real snug with your hand. And what you're going to do don't grab your scales and pull on them. You don't want to break these scales. But you want to hold them 
and push with your thumb very carefully. Hold on to the steel and push with your thumb and you'll see it start to move right here. And what happens is it'll fall right off like that. So that's our blade. And again, to put this on right here, you just line up the hole right here and slide it on. It's harder to do that once the blade's on there. That blade's 17 thousandths of an inch thick, so uh, that makes a difference when you're putting that on. So, next question, what is this? Most of them don't come with this. Uh, this piece right here, you would, well, you would line it up just like you did the other one, like that, line it up, and slide that on. But before you did that, you would put your blade on there, like this right here, and you can put your finger up here if you want to, and then line it up again right here, and push down on the center right here kind of hard, and carefully push it forward just like that, and that's all the way in. So now this is on, and this is tight. It's not coming off because that blade's just the right thickness. And so now uh, you can see the only thing exposed here is your whole blade right here, and this is the beveled end right here, the beveled end there. And your blue right here, this is your blade and the beveled end there. You would think, well, you could probably shave with this right here like that, right? Uh, I've not tried that with the, with these, but because of the blade design on these right here, but uh, with a with a regular blade, you might be able to do that. Um, but what this is made for, this piece right here is made for, uh, is to be used with a strop and. This is a fine weave linen strop right here. This is really a nice strop right here. I love this strop. And what you would do is you have this end right here that kind of rolls over. And what you would do is put it like this right here, turn it and turn it, uh, pull it toward you, the blade down and flip it over. And then back. And, you know, this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you would end up doing it on the leather side, same way. But this allows you to roll it so that you can sharpen this blade again. Now, Dur uh, Durham said that you could sharpen this blade indefinitely, but, you know, nothing's indefinite, right? So that's what that does. And to take this off right here, uh, you can grab hold this part right here and uh, very carefully... Uh, Push on it right here. Watch that blade now, cause, and then just pull that off. And it goes right back in on the same way. So that's how that works right there. It lets you strop it and sharpen that blade again and again and again. And you know, a barber or somebody like that would, uh, would be doing that cause they're used to doing that, okay? So that's a pretty neat idea right there. Now generally, um, when you see these, you're not gonna see them with this part right here. You'll see them with this piece right here for shaving, trimming your beard, mustache a little bit with that. Generally, you're gonna see them like this right here. Uh, it'll just have this one piece right here for you to shave with. And uh, and I'll have a box of uh, blades here, and then you've got your handle and so forth here. So um, that's pretty neat. And this one here would be the same way, just has uh, your, your attachment here for shaving with too. This is an older one here. Now these are like, uh, 80 to 100 years old, somewhere around in there, I think. But uh, they're fun to shave with, and they're just a, a neat part of history, I guess, too, you know, at least to me. Um, 
like I said, I, I always shave with some type of straight razor, and I enjoy that. So, uh, I hope this gives you some idea about the, the kind of the uniqueness of uh, the Durham uh, duplex razors and how uh, fantastic they are. I think uh, you know a lot of people really like those. And today, uh, they still make them today in 2020, 2021. Um, they make the blades in knives and stuff like that. Uh, the blades that I've seen looks more like carpet blades to me. It's more industrial type stuff and knives. But uh, it, you have to get them out of like Sheffield, England. So that's kind of it on the Durham Duplex um, Razor Company going back to 1908 where it was founded in New York uh, again by Thomas C. Durham. And later they merged with a couple of other companies uh, like uh, uh, Butcher, became in Wade and Butcher Plants in Sheffield, England uh, back in the 20s and um, came out with other types of razors like more modern, like the DE razor, double-edged razor, like this one back over here. That, so just a lot of history with this company. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Gary J.